Now we will analyze the normal modes of a one-dimensional lattice with a basis. And there are two ways we can look at this problem. We can treat a one-dimensional lattice with a diatomic basis, for example, either by assuming different masses, M1 and M2, for the atoms. So you can see we have alternating masses, M1, M2. However, the force constant uh, for the springs that connects these masses is the same, C. Or uh, we can assume we have different spring constants, C1 and C2, between alternating atoms of the same mass. So these two approaches are identical, basically. They give the same uh, result. Now, if you look at the displacements of the atoms, because we have two types of atoms in this model, uh, we call the displacements of atoms that are labeled with mass M1, U, uh, and the, the ones that are labeled with mass M2 are V. So S is our index that basically tells us how far from uh, the origin we are. So um, S equals to zero is uh, going to give us U0, the first atom's displacement, for example. And now there's something we have to be careful here. What is the lattice constant for this lattice? Well, it's the distance between M1. So we have we have to look at not the nearest neighbor distance because M1 and M2 form the basis. Uh, we need to look at the distance between uh, bases. So M1, M2, and then where where is the next M1, M2, next M1, M2, etc. So the lattice constant is between two M1s or two M2s. Uh, for simplicity, we will assume only nearest neighbor interactions. And as I said, in this model, we're assuming equal spring constants between all pairs. Now, if we write the equation of motion, uh, we have to look at how much the uh, spring that connects the two atoms is stretched. So let's concentrate on this atom uh, right here. Uh, so we're looking at the two springs that it is connected. The spring to the right uh, is connecting it to M2, and when M2 is displaced by a distance Vs from its equilibrium position, that will be stretching the spring, and therefore the restoring force acting on M1 will be to the right. So this will cause um, C times Vs to the right. However, the displacement of M1 from its equilibrium position, U sub S, will be compressing this spring. So it will be basically applying a force in the negative direction. So that will be minus C U S. So the first term is C times V S minus U S. And as for the second spring that it is connected to, when M1 is displaced from its equilibrium position by US, the spring is stretched and therefore the restoring force will be to the left, so it will be minus CUS. And for the uh, M2, which is displaced by VS minus 1, so S minus 1 uh, atom of type 2, uh, it's going to be compressing the spring and it will be applying a restoring force on M1 uh, to the right, so it will be plus CVS minus 1. So you can see here we have plus CVS minus 1 and minus CUS. So these two spring forces give us the net uh, mass times acceleration, net force acting on this, L1, D squared US, DT squared. Uh, now I have to do the same exercise for the second type of atom. The second type of atom uh, that is here, um, M2, so if I look at the spring to the right that connects it to M1, when M1 is displaced by a distance US plus 1, the spring is stretched, the restoring force on M2 is to the right. So it will be plus C US plus 1, and for, uh, since VS is compressing the spring, the restoring force will be to the left, so it will be minus C VS. So you can see here, plus C US plus 1 and minus C VS. And for the second one, uh, the spring that connects it to M1 to the left, um, when M1 is displaced by a distance US that is compressing the spring, the restoring force is to the right, so C times US on M2. And when M2 is displaced by a distance VS, 
it's going to be stretching the spring, the restoring force will be to the left, so minus CVS. So it will be plus CUS minus CVS, and the net force will give me M2 D square VS DT square. So, uh, if you look at these equations, uh, you can see that I have two US's here, so I can uh, put this into C parentheses, M1 D square US DT square, the two pluses are VS and VS minus one, and then I have minus two US. And as for VS, the second equation, I have um, two VS's, so minus two VS, and C US plus one and US. So it's going to give me the net force. Now I'm done with writing the equation of motion. Now what type of solutions do I look for? So in an analogy with the monatomic case, we will look for traveling wave solutions. Traveling wave solutions, remember, are of the form E to the I K dot R minus omega T. So R is the position vector of the atoms. So uh, we can see that this will be U.S.s will be of the form U0 e to the I K A S e to the minus I omega T and V.S.s will be of the form V0 e to the I K S e to the minus I omega T. So when S is equal to 0, you can see that U0, U.S. will be U0, U0 equals U0 uh, and V.S. V0 equals V0. So uh, at time T is equal to 0. So these are our traveling wave solutions. And once again, I note here that the A, a lattice constant, is not the distance between neighboring atoms, it's the distance between identical atoms, not nearest neighbors. Okay, so if we substitute this solution into the uh, equation of motion, uh, first of all, second derivative of U with respect to T, it's the same thing we have done before. First derivative gives us minus i omega, second derivative gives us minus i omega parenthesis squared. So it will be i squared omega squared minus omega squared us. And similarly, second derivative of vs with respect to time gives us minus omega squared vs. So if we substitute this into the equation of motion, it becomes minus m1 omega squared us is equal to c times vs plus vs minus 1 minus 2 us. Uh, and since these solutions are of the form uh, V0 e to the i k a s e to the minus i omega t, so e to the minus i omega t on two sides will cancel, so I will have minus m1 omega square u0 is equal to c times for V s V0 e to the i k0, which is 1, and for V s minus 1 I have V0 e to the minus i k a, and for 2 us, I will have minus 2 u0. The common factor e to the minus i omega t has cancelled. So I had an e to the minus i omega t here, and I had an e to the minus i omega t here, but they cancelled. All right. Now, this basically uh, makes, um, in so I can take this into uh, v0 parentheses, v0 times 1 plus e to the minus i k a minus 2 u0. So you can see here this equation will become minus m1 omega square u0 is c v0 1 plus e to the minus i k a v0 parentheses minus 2 c u0. I do the same exercise for the second equation. The second equation, left hand side, remember we have found minus m2 omega square vs. Uh, so for vs we substitute v0 e to the minus i omega t. And for c times us plus 1 plus us minus 2 vs, we substitute uh, u0 uh, e to the i k a plus u0 minus 2 v0. Again, there is the factor e to the minus i omega t on both sides, but that will be cancelling. Okay, so if I uh, take this into u0 parentheses, I see that this equation is in the form minus m2 omega square v0 c times u0 1 plus e to the i k a minus 2 c v0. So we have two equations, two coupled equations. This is an eigenvalue problem. The solution is going to be the determinant of the coefficients of u0 and v0. So that should be equal to 0. Uh, so we have to uh, work on these equations to uh, determine the coefficients of u0, v0. For the first equation, 
uh, you can see on the left hand side I had minus m1 omega square u0 now I have minus 2 u0 on the right hand side so that becomes plus 2 2c minus m1 omega square u0 on the left hand side and if I take uh, v0 term to the left hand side it will be minus c 1 plus e to the minus ika v0 equals to 0 now I work on the second equation. The second equation has minus m2 omega square v0 plus 2c v0 from the right hand side. So that goes to the left hand side. And I take the u0 term to the left hand side minus c1 plus e to the ika u0 equals to 0. The coefficients 2c minus m1 omega square minus c1 plus e to the minus ika. Uh, minus c1 plus e to the ika, 2c minus m2 omega square, uh, coefficients of u0 and v0, this is uh, a matrix equation, this is equal to 0, so the determinant of the coefficients must be equal to 0. So when I take the determinant of the coefficients, uh, it's going to be, basically, I have to multiply uh, these two first, and then I have to multiply uh, these two, and uh, this is going to be subtracted, this is going to be added. So uh, 2c minus m1 omega square multiplied with 2c minus m2 omega square is 4c square uh, plus m1 m2 omega to the fourth power minus 2c m1 omega square minus 2c m2 omega square. So that's going to be the uh, red arrow. And then I have to subtract from this the multiplication of minus c1 plus e to the minus ika and minus c1 plus e to the plus ika. So that's going to give me minus c square 1 plus e to the ika plus 1 plus e to the minus ika. So that must be equal to 0. And you can see that I have 2 plus 2 cosine ka here. Why? Because uh, e to the ika plus e to the minus ika will be cosine ka plus i sine ka and then I will have plus cosine ka minus i sine ka so these minuses will cancel so I will get 2 cosine ka Euler's formula so that gives me uh, 4c square plus m1 m2 omega to the fourth power minus 2c omega square parentheses m1 plus m2 minus c squared 2 plus 2 cosine ka. That's, that, that must be equal to 0. Now, if I rearrange this equation, no, I note that omega to the fourth power term has m1, m2 as a coefficient, and then I have minus omega squared term. The coefficient is uh, 2c m1 plus m2, and then I have uh, 4c squared minus 2c squared minus 2c squared cosine ka. So these will give me 2c square. Uh, so with this simplification I obtain m1 m2 omega to the fourth power minus 2c m1 plus m2 omega square plus 2c square 1 minus cosine ka. 2c square parentheses 1 minus cosine ka. So we need to solve for omega square. So uh, this is basically a, a simple uh, equation. Uh, we have uh, for equations of this form, we have to find the uh, discriminant uh, b square minus 4ac, remember, so that is uh, 4c square m1 plus m2 square minus 4ac, so that's going to be 4 times 2, 8c square m1 m2, 1 minus cosine ka. So minus b, which is 2c m1 plus m2, plus minus square root of the discriminant divided by 2a, 2 m1 m2, uh, so basically I'm using minus b plus or minus square root um, b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this is uh, the formula for the uh, quadratic uh, polynomial um, when, when you have the equation of the form ax square plus by plus c is equal to zero. So we see that omega square, uh, therefore, will have this form. And you can see I have 2c m1 plus m2, that's coming from minus b. 
and then I have 4c square and 8c uh, square inside the discriminant so if I take the 4 out as 2 out of the square root as 2 2 will be cancelling uh, the top 2 the 4 and 8 becomes 2 in the discriminant so I will have c m1 plus m2 plus or minus c square now if I write this explicitly m1 plus m2 square is m1 square plus m2 square plus 2 m1 m2 and then I have minus 2 c square m1 m2 so it's minus 2 m1 m2 and then I have plus 2 c square m1 m2 cosine ka square root divided by m1 m2 so if I can re rewrite this as a in the clean form c m1 plus m2 plus or minus uh, c square comes out of the square root as c m1 square plus m2 square plus 2 m1 m2 cosine ka square root divided by m1 m2 so I, I obtain two branches there's a plus solution and there's a minus solution and we're going to examine the behavior of these branches of omega versus k the dispersion relationship both in the middle and at the end of the first brillion zone to understand uh, what is going on in this case